Private podcasts are becoming increasingly popular. Hey, it's Justin from Transistor.fm, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to start a private podcast. We have customers using these in all sorts of different ways, everything from companies who are using them for employee training, to people releasing their own audiobooks, to people with membership businesses offering private podcasts as a membership perk. Now, what's the difference between a private podcast and a public podcast? Well, normally with a public podcast, you would submit your show to all of the public directories like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, and this allows people to search for your podcast on their favorite podcast listening app, and this makes it easy for listeners to find your show, subscribe, and listen to your latest episodes. But with a private podcast, you don't want to submit it to those public directories. You don't want Apple to list it in their Apple Podcasts store. You want to give individual access to people. So let me show you how this works with a private podcast on Transistor. So in this case, I've invited a subscriber. They get to this page here. They have to enter a password. That takes them to this page here. And this page allows them to add the private podcast directly to their listening app, bypassing the public directory. So I can click on Apple Podcasts and it will automatically add that private podcast feed to my Apple Podcasts library. With Transistor, subscribers can also listen to episodes on the web just by clicking through and playing it hey, everybody. in their this browser, is just on their desktop or on their phone. And private podcasts work with almost all of the podcasting apps with the exception of Spotify. But it'll work in Overcast, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts. It's just super easy to subscribe, add the show to your personal library. And then again, if this is for employees, wherever they're at, they can get caught up on company news, interviews with the CEO, team training, and it's all right there where they normally listen to podcasts. The other advantage with private podcasts is you can see how subscribers are listening to the podcast. This is especially helpful if you're doing mandatory training over audio. So in this case, I can see which episodes this subscriber has listened to. I can also look at individual episodes and quickly filter who has listened to the episode and who has not listened to that episode. If I don't want a subscriber to have access to the private podcast anymore, I can simply click remove subscriber. And then the next time they try to access the podcast, they won't be able to. So if you're a company or you're running a membership program and you want to control who has access to the private podcast, you can do that quite easily by adding subscribers or removing them. There are really three types of private podcasts and three levels of security or privacy. In the old days, everyone just used to have a single RSS feed like this that had a username and password embedded in it. And you would just share this with your subscribers. Say, hey, here it is. Just add this RSS feed to your podcast app. So you would have them copy it and then they would need to know how to manually add a podcast feed in Apple Podcasts by going up here to add show URL, paste it in, click follow, and then it would add it to their app. What we've done with Transistor is we've created an onboarding system for new subscribers where we generate a new RSS feed for everyone you add, but we also make it easy for them to add it to their podcast app with one click. So over here I could add a single subscriber at a time if I wanted to. I can upload a CSV. I can also share an invite link with subscribers. So let's do that here. So let's say I've just received an invite link. And what this invite link allows me to do is add my email, which then sends a welcome email to my inbox. Let's go there. And it gives me all of the instructions. I can play the latest episode in my browser if I want. There it is. Or I can add it to my favorite listening app. I click here. And now I can easily add it to whatever listening app I use. And it automatically downloads the first episode. You can see there's even a little security icon here in Overcast to let you know it's a private podcast. 
and I can click. Hey, everybody, right this away. is Justin from Transistor. And in the spectrum of security and privacy, Transistor's opted for this middle of the road approach. It allows me to give individual access to subscribers without being too heavy handed about security, entering passwords, single sign on, and maybe things that enterprise companies might want. I can still remove access to a subscriber if I no longer want them to be able to get new episodes just by clicking remove subscriber. But if you're looking for more of those enterprise controls, you'd have to go with a company like UStudio and they offer single sign-on, a dedicated app just for your company. And uh, it's definitely, if you really want that enterprise grade security, this is probably the company you would wanna go with. It's quite a bit more expensive. Uh, I think it can get up to the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but if that's what you need, go with that. Transistor is much more affordable. Uh, you can get private podcasts on the $19 plan uh, for up to 50 subscribers. And we think our approach to private podcasts is probably best because anything you publish on the internet, whether that's an email, a website, an attachment, and especially audio and video, even if it's encrypted, even if it's password protected, it's pretty easy for people to use a screen recorder or audio recorder and record your audio anyway. In fact, the way that podcasting apps work is they download a copy of the MP3 to the device for offline listening on an airplane or in a car ride. And by its very nature, the technology allows there to be an audio file that lives on your device. So if security is your main concern, private podcasting is probably not the right channel. We advise all of our customers who are considering private podcasts uh, to take this into account. You probably shouldn't publish your company's secrets on a private podcast. Whether you go with a solution like Transistor or something more enterprise grade, regardless of how you're publishing it, it's still possible for the audio to get out. We encourage our customers to think of private podcasts in the same way that you think of an internal email at a company. You know, you can say, don't share this email, this is private, but people can still screen capture it, right? They can still copy and paste the text. And in a lot of cases, they can forward the email, um, but they know not to, right? There's, there's some practice around not doing that. And it's the same with private podcasts. All right, we've gone through all of that. Now let's talk about how to create a private podcast for your organization or for your membership site, however you plan on using it. In Transistor, you will go to add a new show. And I could create a public podcast. I can import an existing podcast, but I want this option on the bottom, create a private podcast. All right, so we're gonna call this Acme Co Private Podcast and a training podcast for new employees. I'm going to add some podcast artwork. I can also create a safe list for invite links. So if I only want the invite links to be to go to people with certain email addresses, uh, in this case, maybe transistor.fm company addresses, I can put that on there. Choose the language. I can also customize the welcome email. Welcome to the company. For training, we use this audio podcast. So once I have my welcome email configured, I can also configure when folks will get email notifications. And if I want to set a just general password that everyone has to use to get access to this, just one more layer of security, I can do that here. But I'm gonna click create private podcast. Perfect. The show has been created. Now. Before I can invite subscribers, I'm going to need to have an episode published in the podcast feed. So I'm gonna go add my first episode, message from the CEO. So I'm gonna head over to my recording and editing software. This is Descript. I highly re recommend it, it's great. You can edit your audio visually. And I've got this episode one ready to go. So I'm going to export this as an audio file as an mp3. Okay, so that's done. Now I can head over here and upload that to Transistor. I can give it a summary. If I wanted to, I could have optional episode artwork. 
And here I'll put some longer show notes. And then I also have the ability to customize the email we'll send to subscribers. All right, I'm gonna publish this episode. And now that the episode is published, if I go back here, I can see there's the, the first episode there. Now I can go to the subscribers section and add subscribers. And like I said, there's three ways you can add subscribers. You can do it one subscriber at a time. You can upload a CSV file, or you can share this invite link. And some folks will copy this and then paste it inside of their Slack group or put it in their internal wiki. If it's a membership site, you might have that invite link as a part of your onboarding process. But this, of course, allows people to opt in to the podcast themselves. So in my case, I could add my email address. Now watch what happens when I add an email that's not a transistor.fm domain. Remember, I restricted this to only people who have a certain email address, a certain company domain. So when I try to submit that, it doesn't work. This ensures that if you only want employees at your company to have access, they'll need a company email address in order to get access. So I'm gonna submit this. Now I have to, as a subscriber, go to my inbox. I now have this welcome email. Welcome to the company. This is our private podcast. You've been added as a subscriber to the company podcast. And now I can play the latest episode in my browser if I want. That for this, the purpose. Or I can add it to my favorite podcast listening app. And this will give me options depending on what device I'm on. So right now I'm on a Mac. And so it's allowing me to add it to Apple Podcasts. And it will allow me to add the private podcast here. Or you can also use your phone, scan this QR code, and open up the page right here. Makes it really easy for employees or subscribers to get their welcome page on their phone so that they can easily just add it to Apple Podcasts or wherever they listen. So that's how you can add private subscribers. As soon as people are adding themselves or as soon as you are adding them via CSV file, they'll appear here and they will appear as activated or not activated if they've downloaded or streamed at least one episode. Let's upload a second episode and show you what happens there. So I'm gonna go here, I'm going to export this as episode two, another MP3 file. All right, that's done. Now I can go here, sales training. That's what we'll call this episode. Can select episode two. Here is our intro to our sales process. Again, I can add longer show notes here, more description, and then I can also choose to send all my subscribers an email notifying them about this episode. Here is our new sales process. This is mandatory for all salespeople. Once my episode's ready, if I wanted to, I could schedule this for a future date and select that from a calendar, or I can choose to publish it right now, which is what I'll do. And once an episode is published, all of the subscribers will receive that email notification. It's right here. So here's the new episode. And what I like about this is we're meeting especially corporate employees where they're at. They're in their inbox. So instead of making them use some sort of proprietary podcast app, or even maybe they don't use a podcasting app, they can play the episode right in their browser. And this is, they'll only have access to this as long as they're a subscriber. And it just makes it really easy. Play in the episode 2020. and they're done. Now, as you add more episodes and as you get more subscribers, you'll get really in-depth analytics like this where you'll be able to see your total subscribers, how many of them have activated, how many total downloads or streams you've had. And then you can also get these really great analytics on each episode. And I can see everybody who has listened to that episode and has not listened to that episode. I, I can also click through on individual subscribers 
and see all of the episodes that they've listened to. This is especially helpful if you're doing a training podcast and you need to make sure they've listened to every single episode in the series. You can also order your episodes to see which ones were the most popular and you'll be able to see where people were listening, what apps they were using. Private Podcasts also works with our dynamic audio feature. So if you want to insert uh, a special announcement, maybe you have an upcoming event and you just want to be able to insert that audio, a little clip of audio in all of your episodes just for uh, you know, a limited amount of time, you can create those campaigns here. And then when the event or announcement is over, you can remove it and it'll automatically remove it from all of the episodes you have in your account. So that's how private podcasts work and how you create a private podcast. If you'd like to experiment with private podcasts, you can get a 14 day free trial by heading over to transistor.fm, click the 14 day free trial button. And yeah, that'll give you two weeks to create your own private podcast, send out the invite link to people, have them try it out on their phone and add the private podcast to their app. And you'll also be able to use our live chat widget. If you have any questions, uh, if you're wondering how this might work with your company, if you have security questions, you can do that right here and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for listening.